mutton and showing shit. I chose not to, but now I'm out here walking with the football team, picking up trash. But I'm mutton us. Man, get out of here, man. I should leave. I'm not even under contract doing this. I'm mutton us. Man, get out of here, man. They mutt me. These because ain't even clean my damn office when I got here. I'm mutton y'all. Get your ass, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. All this here was trash in front of me. Who you think got this cleared out? That building right there got trash in it. It's fing trash. What are you talking about? I need no donors to come out and help out because people just want money. That's why I don't have, that's why I don't with social network. F out of here, man. Prime was not wrong about what he was saying. All y'all out there with y'all opinions full of crap, don't know shit. But needless to say, I just pulled up to work. Try to, um, we're gonna try to help y'all too, man, because I know a lot of HBCs need help. I'm just here to help here first. I see it all too clearly. All our HBCs need help, HBCUs need help. And they need help because of the people who's running it. It's broken mentalities out here. I've been here for a week and a half. I've been here for a week and a half and have done more than people that have been here in freaking years. And I'm not even hired yet. Damn shame. I holla. <laughs> so uh, that is new Bethune Cookman head coach uh, Ed Reed, I think, because you calling it, <laughs> you calling out the school <laughs> like that uh, before the first game is played. I wonder, uh, will he make it to the first game? But he's talking about all the issues that are happening. Bethune Cookman, Dr. Jason Johnson, this got your attention. Uh, uh, tell us why it got your attention, Doc. You know that Chappelle so sketch where they're at Pop Copy? And he's like, he's like, F all of you. And then join Pop Copy. That's what this made me think of. I am so sick and tired. As you guys can see behind me, I am on campus at Morgan State University, a wonderful HBCU where I am faculty at. I am sick and tired of these drive-by, fly-by-night political analysts, journalists, and now apparently former NFL playing coaches who want to march into HBCUs, have been there for all the five minutes, and then attempt to lecture not only the school, the students, but the entire country on the almost 200 year history of historically black colleges and universities as if they know something because they walk through the quad. It's not just insulting what Ed Reed said because it shows not only a lack of professionalism, but it shows a deeper level of disrespect that all too many African-American professional athletes have for HBCUs. The very schools that made it possible for their predecessors to get into the league to make opportunities mm. available for mm. them. I promise you, he doesn't know the history of HBCUs. I promise you, he's not as well studied as Eddie George who said, hey, part of the reason that we've had issues at my school is because they don't have land grant money. I'm sure that Ed Reed hasn't done a minimal level of research to be able to say what he said, which is why he had to go back and apologize. But I promise you that if he had gone to a small, low endowment, predominantly white institution, he wouldn't have dared say what he did. And that's the larger issue we have here. I'm happy to have a discussion about HBCUs. I'm happy to have that discussion with people who know things. But what I don't like is black athletes going back to HBCUs and claiming that they're saviors when they don't know the difference. This man, he look, he ain't too short. He ain't blown a whistle for one game or one play. So I think he might want to step back for a minute, even with his apology, and hit a book before he starts hitting social media. Jason, can I, can I ask you, how dangerous are his words and the words of Deion Sanders, and why? How dangerous are they? They're, they're incredibly dangerous. They're incredibly dangerous, and here's why. One, 
you feed into the overall negative zeitgeist about HBCUs, when in fact the story of HBCUs has been improving. Since the Obama administration, it's not necessarily crediting in Obama, but since the Obama administration, the last 10 or 15 years, you've had more HBCUs move into the black, move into solvency, increase HBCU numbers across the country. And I'm not just talking our Ivies. I'm not just talking Howard and Spellman and Hampton. I'm talking about Johnson C. Smith. I'm talking about Central. I'm talking about Morgan had one of the largest incoming classes the last couple of years. More and more African-American students and athletes are recognizing, especially with the NIL, that there are opportunities to be had here. So when you have these prominent athletes who are given a lot of attention, who have millions of social media followers, downing these institutions, claiming that these institutions are institutional failures without having much mm. institutional knowledge, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts fundraising. It hurts recruiting and it damages the reputation of the school that many other students are leaving and trying to sell when they go to jobs in the real world. Well, let me ask you both. Uh, you know, uh, Doc Johnson, you are teaching at an HBCU. Jim Trotter, you're a proud graduate of the real HU, <laughs> Howard University. I love that. I love that little debate. I love that. And, 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 and by the way, it's by the way, Doc, Tr Trotter, Trotter is always, and Trotter always says, Hey, we never had institute in our title. <laughs> I just want no, to put no, that out I never there. Said I love that. that. No, 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 oh, that no, was, no, no. Uh, Weiss, don't ask me. Don't ask me. Yeah, that was Weiss. That was Weiss. You Weiss. can't put that on me because uh, I, I would never disrespect <laughs> Hampton in that way. <laughs> but, I, but, but I do want to ask you guys this. Okay, it's all it's all fair. It's all fair um, to say, hey, what are these athletes doing, and why would they come out? You know, so disrespectful, talking about things that they don't necessarily know the history of. Okay. How about the flip side? What what's in it for Bethune Cookman? Why why does Bethune Cookman reach out to Ed Reed as opposed to somebody else who may have more knowledge and more respect for what they're doing? Jackson State and Dion, uh, we that's well traveled ground, but a lot of these a lot of these schools are reaching out to these athletes who are not necessarily attuned to the greater mission. So why do you think that is? Well, if, if it's, you're it's asking, money. Go and, ahead, and there's, here's the thing. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong right. with hiring. We we'll call it stunt casting, right? There's nothing. Look, that's how you got Steve Nash, right? Okay, there's nothing wrong with hiring former athletes and making the assumption that they make, maybe they could turn out to be decent coaches. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with taking somebody who's not that experienced and giving them an opportunity to teach young men and women who may be playing for them what the actual sport that they're trying to play in is like. There's nothing wrong with that. My issue is the disrespect. You have been offered a job, and, 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 and so you're supposed to research the job before you go. For Ed Reed to say, oh, I'm here to save HBCUs. Dude, had you never visited campus? Had you never talked to students? Did you know what your budget was gonna be? Did you know what your financial circumstances were gonna be? Like, this is the guy who shows up and goes to Chick-fil-A and is like, yo, there's grease all over the place. What is with this? It's Chick-fil-A, bro. That's why you got the job, right? So if you know that Chick-fil-A is gonna be filled with chicken grease and waffle fries, how are you gonna go to an HBCU that has suffered through financial difficulties in the state and be shocked that some of the facilities are not up to your local, you know, up to your local orange theory? Chill out, do some research before you start running your mouth. It's good for the school. It's also good for these athletes, but they need to show more respect. Look, the, the only time many of these athletes have ever been on an HBCU campus was when they went on a recruiting visit to PWIs and the PWIs brought them to an HBCU campus, making them believe that the culture was there, that it's okay if it's not on the PWI campus, they can get it here. When I was at, at Howard, Georgetown would bring his basketball recruits over to our place to, to be a part of the culture. And some of those players ended up marrying women from Howard um, after that. Down at LSU, what do they do? They take their recruits down to Southern. Why? To be part of that culture and make them feel comfortable down there. So it happens. So look, for me, what's happening here with administrations when they do this apart is, look, we live in a celebrity culture. And if a Deion Sanders or an Ed Reed, Hall of Fame guys who are out there in the public that we know well, the name recognition and whatnot come to you and say, Hey, I have an interest in coaching. Coaching, as the doctor said, I'm okay with that. You know, but again, know what you're getting into, and then if you're truly there, like I get tired of hearing them say, "We're here to help HBCUs. We want to save HBCUs." Well, then don't look, don't look at them as a stepping stone. Do what Larry Scott is doing at Howard, where he was offered a job at Alabama as a tight ends coach under Nick Saban. He said, "You know what? 
no, nah, I'm going to pass on that because I feel I have a greater calling here at Howard and I want to do something. And so he stayed at Howard instead of going to Alabama. Mm. So that's like my that. point. Just just, just be real about what it is. And, and as an HBCU, HBCU alum, I get tired of them looking at us at times from what I hear as stepping stones. I really do. There, there is something special if you've attended an HBCU. Um, there is something special about that university, right? I, I'm just telling you as someone who went and grew up going to predominantly white high schools and all of that, the minute I got on Howard's campus, man, I felt at home. It, it was just different, right? And there was that nurturing effect and it helped me become a man, right? Not just because, mm. not just to graduate and all that, but helped me become a man and understand what the real world was about and people who had a vested interest in me succeeding in life as opposed to me just going through school and getting a degree. So I would say to Ed Reed and these other former players who may want to do it, understand that there is a larger calling when you go to these schools, at least from my vantage point. And I'm not saying that you can't go on to a PWI or a Power 5 school or whatnot, but just understand what you're getting into and how we view you and, and what your real purpose can be. Oh, well said, brother. Well said, uh, Trotter. Uh, before we go, uh, Doc Johnson, we just got a few few seconds left. Uh, your, your take on Seattle's playoff game against San Francisco. I, you told me it was going to happen. I just wanted to just know how you saw it. <laughs> I, I mean, it, 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 it was a it was a beat down. It was a beat down. I've seen UFC competitions that, that were better than that. They were going to get beat down. The Seahawks are going to stay with Geno Smith. I'm very excited about that. They can continue to fight for a wild card spot for the next couple of years because they're not going to end up being successful one way or another. And Brock Purdy is probably going to backstep, stumble his way all the way to a Super Bowl, which offends me deeply no. because, again, I cannot stand uh, Nepo coach Shanahan. But at the end of the day, I don't think that you can – I don't think anybody can beat – the San Francisco Golden State Warriors of the NFL. I don't even think the Eagles can do it as much as I'm in my Eagles green and I'm hoping for Jalen Hurts to go up there and beat Patrick Mahomes in the, in the NFL championship. See, I see. I love that line. You, you mm. get that line he had, Trotter. Mm. He called him Nep. He called him Nepo coach uh, uh, Shanahan. Oh. But that's like <laughs> the, NF, the NFL culture because uh, look at the front office, the ownership of San Francisco, family affair there, Dallas. Family affair. Mike Brown is the owner of the Bengals because his father, Paul Brown, founded the franchise. Like all across, <laughs> coaching staffs, uh, you know, uh, general yep. managers, ownership, like scouting, it's all over. That's America, I think. <laughs> Doc Johnson, great to see of you, brother. NFL head coaches related to each other. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Appreciate right, you, Doc. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.